Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. This episode is going to be about this vest. And as usual with this kind of videos where I show you a recent build, I will be not just showing it to you, but talking about design principles behind it and also crafting challenges that I've faced and solved so you can hopefully find it interesting and informative and maybe it helps your own post-apocalyptic creations. So let's start with the elephant in the room or rather the clutch on the chest. So this thing is a part of a clutch pressure plate. For those of you who don't know at all what I'm talking about, it's a car part. It's a real part from a real car. A lot of those of you who do know what a clutch is have commented, oh my god, this looks cool, but it's probably heavy. And yes, a full clutch plate like this, which consists, uh, sorry, full clutch pressure plate, it's not a full clutch assembly, but a clutch pressure plate which has both this shell thingy which I have on the chest here and this inner metal disc thing. I don't know the names, but it's what it is. A metal disc thing like this. That is heavy. That's about five kilograms or so, which is pretty heavy if you wear it for a while. But I removed this, like this part was inside of here. And I removed it, thus dishing half the weight or even more. I didn't weigh those, but that's what it feels like. Uh, and thus, this here just weighs, I don't know, two to three kilograms, which is really not that bad. I mean, it depends on who you are, but like for me, it's not a problem at all. I could run around with this all day. I do feel the weight, it's just not terrible or not super uncomfortable or whatever. It rather feels like armor-ish reassuring sort of weight. Of course, this is not a great or full or whatever armor, but it, it kind of feels like... <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, it's not that heavy because I removed the inner, inner disc. I did not do that on my, my very first creation, which was my backpack that used the clutch. On my very first creation that used the clutch. And that was kind of heavy. So after that, I was like, man, I'm going to remove this inner disc and I did and then it got a lot better so this is what I do uh, another thing I do is you saw me wearing a glove just now when I was handling that inner disc thing that's because it's not cleaned this is I cleaned this before attaching it to the costume because whatever nasty used car part grime stuff there is in there I don't want it on my costume or on me so I also always clean out those car parts I obviously will not go ahead and remove all the cool rust rust spots but I do remove all the nasty grime before working with it I don't know why some people think it has to be like really dirty it doesn't it doesn't make sense why is this aesthetically nice well it looks like a part of a spaceship to people who don't know what it is and let's face it, it, it just does. Like, this looks super space. Looks super futuristic. I think it just, regarding pure aesthetics, a clutch plate looks awesome. Now, for people who know what it is, this tells aesthetically a similar or same story. I mean, this thing looks the same to them, but they do know it's a, a clutch part or a car part. So that tell, tells kind of a car post-apocalyptic warrior story. Someone who took this, maybe on purpose, because they know it's a car part and they like cars. Like the character for whom this vest is. His name is Sparkplug. He likes cars and guns. Thus, you know, the Sparkplug uh, logo here, which I will get to, and the clutch. And the caliber 7.62 and 5.56. Like, it just instantly, you know, directs it into the post-apocalyptic direction. Just by the virtue of it being a repurposed thing. In the old world it was a car part, now it is a piece of a chest armor. Moving on to the logo I just mentioned. So I did this in kind of, I don't know, half an hour or so. I mean, designing the logo, just the design process. Some people said it kind of looks like there is a snake on here. It was actually supposed just to be a torn cable, like electricity cable that feeds the spark plug with electricity. But hey, if you see a snake in here, the cooler. I like snakes. <laughs> snakes are nice. I maybe should make another episode about just logo design. This is etched in aluminum and then I uh, spray painted it with black spray paint and then used a flat kind of um, sandpaper block to sand off just the uh, higher parts. So everything except the etching. And uh, that leaves me with 
paint inside of there which accentuates the whole thing and it's uh, impossible to rub off. Now these here, these are just sprayed on the sides. Uh, also pay attention how this is designed here. It's a big circle right here. It's a smaller so circle right here. That creates a V-shape and so do these. The direction of those is also a V and so do these additional belts. Now this, this whole thing um, really accentuates the manly physique which is broader shoulders, smaller waist, it does a V, right? I've talked about this in uh, one of my episodes, that accentuating archetypical anatomy is one of the ways uh, that you can make your costumes, well, convey whatever it is you want to convey. In this case, it's uh, more manliness, brutality, all of that kind of thing. And also check out these belts right here where it says A2 Nomad. So I uh, did those on purpose, these were just white belts and I did this repeating stencil so it kind of looks like it has been scavenged from something. You know, some industrial belt was printed with this pattern, with this name, um, and then it has been scavenged. But in reality it was, were just white belts. And this both adds a lot of a story and also as you can see, like even from afar you can see those white belts again creating that V shape. Uh, if you look at the whole uh, thing, at the whole vest, it's kind of like really stocky actually. It's really more horizontal, but through these white belts, it again creates more of that V. Now, uh, moving on, here on the shoulders we have some uh, bullet belt stuff. So by the way, this whole thing, uh, this whole vest is for a client, and of course I will not be sending it with the bullet belt in the mail. This will just stay with me which is why it can be removed. Now this is also perfectly legal for me to own because there is no powder inside here and the caps, they don't work anymore because they have already been shot. Even if it's legal for me to own, I still don't want to put something like a uh, decoration bullet belt in the mail, okay? So this is why this is just attached with some string right here. I can actually undo it uh, for you towards the end of the video. But it, it's just some shoelace and it's just tied here with a double knot and the bullet belt just sits on top of the neck. Basically like an oversized necklace. And uh, these shoelaces just keep it from uh, moving away or something like that. I've also done some additional reinforcement and decoration here uh, for the base of the whole vest with these uh, military belts right here, right? So it's not just the plain vest, it's some uh, additional belts on top of it, but you can see the base fabric of the vest here. Oh my God, it's camo pattern. Is it possible to use it? Well, yes, as you see, it works, but as you also see, there is so much more to this than just an old military camo pattern vest. Like I worked a lot of other stuff into this and if you do, then it no longer looks like found it in a bunker noob military stuff, which is supposed to be somehow post-apocalyptic, but isn't. But then it j just looks fine. <laughs> like, you don't have to avoid camel pattern no matter what. Now, let's talk about this. This hose right here, a gas mask hose. We have a uh, red accent here just to add some detail and also some... Uh, well, I love red highlights, you know it by now if you watch my channel. Uh, red highlight here, this loop right here is uh, yellow, orange, also to add some life and color. And we have a color echo here in form of this Germany flag that I've just sewn on onto this collar. Where you also, by the way, again see the camel pattern. Back to this, this hose leads to that, well, let's say bunker improvised oxygen rebreather tank kind of thing. Let's just call it that. I have added the bunker Y logo on it, which is just something I came up with, like this logo and stuff. And um, I just added to whatever is supposed to be from a bunker or found in a bunker or whenever I just need to cover a large surface with a cool logo like that that tells a bit of a story. Actually, let me take it off because I can see what I'm showing at. So, um, by the way, I kept all of the 
vests um, or almost all of this vest's uh, mechanisms intact when it comes to closing and opening it. There is some velcro on the sides here, right? There is this very comfortable belt which prevents it from shifting around. So open this up and open that up and I can then just get out of it. Um, when I uh, take off the bullet belt, which I will do now, you will also see that the shoulders still also can be adjusted. I kept that on purpose, although it's not really necessary, like this head hole is big enough. But uh, here is how this works, just some shoelaces poking through this. So just two holes, some shoelaces through this, and that's it. And when I open this up here, I can uh, basically separate the front and the back of the vest entirely, or just adjust the height width, however you want to call it, you know what I mean. Like this whole thing just sits lower and the head hole becomes bigger. All right, so this is kept intact. Usually I will just pick a large enough size for the head hole and add some additional stuff here. Now usually I wouldn't be using these shoelaces here, I would just bolt it here, permanently connecting this because I don't really need that much adjustability. You usually don't for this kind of thing, not for costuming, but in this case, as I've said, I will not be sending this decoration bullet belt along with the rest of the vest, which is why this is removable. All right, let's uh, take it off and get back to the back. Sorry for jumping around from one thing to another. It's just, uh, it doesn't look like it, but there is really a lot of stuff going on here, man. All right, so here's the back. And the base of this is a crate uh, from my rotary tool. Like one of my tools that was in here. So I just distressed it. Like there was the manufacturer logo here on the front, I just uh, send, sanded it off entirely and uh, gave a um, scratch job to the whole crate to make it look old. And yes, it does look like a crate, it, but with all the stuff I added to it, I think it looks kind of like a crate-based thing, like they would use a crate to put some other mechanisms and uh, tanks and whatever inside of it in order to create this kind of a rebreathing device. But we can see here on the side that it's damaged, right, with this bright tape. I wanted to try something uh, new. I actually never did something uh, sloppy looking like this before, but I just uh, taped it here with this yellowish tape and wrote on it quickly, bad unit. O2 tank leak, five minutes maximum. Do not overpressurize in a really small font. You and you will see, or maybe not see, a very small detail here. The corners are cut off. I rounded them off, so I don't have like these aggressive 90 degree shapes on top of this whole thing. This here is rounded off just a bit, not all of them. You will see a couple of sharp corners I did really keep but some of them are rounded off. And this makes this whole thing subtly more organic, more harmonic, instead of it just being in your face too much. And very, very important, there is some dirt on, on top of this. Like before there was dirt on top of this, also kind of smudging it together with the rest of the crate a bit. And before the corners were a bit rounded off, these stripes of tape really just popped out too much, okay? Now this on top here is, um, I don't know what it is, <laughs> some metal part from some cover from an old device. And I've added this decal and this decal. Now it was a bit too empty without this one. Now imagine this without this one. Maybe it's hard to imagine, but let's just cover it up. <laughs> Doesn't work. Anyway, uh, this asymmetric decal really accentuates the whole thing. Now it was a bit too empty. It could have been something else. It could have been a gauge or uh, some other kind of decal. I just decided to attach another metal plate to this. And the way uh, this all is attached, I can show it to you now. This can be opened here, by the way. Added some wrapping here. Advice from my girlfriend, who was present when I was making this. And this really does accentuate the handle here. 
and also added some red to these these logs here. We will open them now, and you can see that here it's possible to add I don't know some <laughs> tactical snacks, I guess. On the inside, it's just empty. By the way, up, up here, this gas mask hose is just screwed in here. I used the hole saw, which a lot of you know is the shredder. It's a uh, sick. It's this thing, just with one of those saw attachments, not all of them. And I took it in just ex the exact size to create a hole large enough for this, and then I just forcefully screwed it in. Luckily, this plastic it's kind of um, tough. It doesn't really break that easily. It's more like, more like a very, very solid liquid kind of thing, if that makes sense. I don't know, it's just tough. It will rather uh, elongate and stretch and whatnot instead of breaking. So yeah, this, I, I think this is pretty cool. Now it has an out time practical thing to put something in it, but in time, in the game, in the story, it's a rebreather unit, even if a broken one. And I mean, stuff like this, it adds a bit of a story, right? It's a shortcut. You, of course, shouldn't tell your whole story just by using shortcuts like this. But it really does um, add a little something, something if you do it here and there. Now, let me remove the bullet belt entirely here so that this whole thing is easier to hold for me. And then I will show you some sneaky back details that are, however, really important too. Mucho importante. Right, and that is it. Here goes the bullet belt. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but even with the bullet belt, the whole thing is like seven to eight kilograms total. The whole build. Without the bullet belt, maybe like one or two kilos less even. Um, here. You can see I added another one of those military belts with this yellow belt on top. This yellow ray appears up here. But what this does is like before that it looked really empty. Also without this, like these clasps right here and these belts, they don't do much practically, but they kind of look like they could be doing or be part of something. And they really create the framework, the visual framework for this um, assembly right here that does uh, fall into your eye easily. These right here, like you really overlook them. And also this loop on this side, you see? Without those small details surrounding this, this would be very, very lonely looking on that plain unmodded back of this vest. Right, and below this, I also added two loops like this. Something could be attached to those, or uh, maybe it was from the previous use of the vest. I don't know. Oh, and uh, don't know if I mentioned that yet. The way the whole crate is attached to the vest, like just through the part of it that is facing the vest, there are some uh, well bolts, nuts, and washers. The usual method I use for everything. I used a bit of Koppeltragegestell parts here, see here, and also on the shoulder. So those parts really don't tell a huge story, but they create kind of a framework, kind of an environment for the more, more pimpy parts, such as this big and important thing. Oh, here in the middle, by the way, there is an insignia, right? So that creates multi-dimensionality to it. A very important aspect. Imagine there was this thing wasn't there. It would be just like a just the camo pattern of the vest. That would look kind of lame. So it doesn't do that. I added this layer of foam here, black foam, and on top of that, in there we have a tin tin can cover like here, and on top of that we have a coin from uh, old school East Germany with the Russian army insignia for the road forces. No political context or anything, I don't do politics and costuming. It's just uh, that I have a lot of Russian insignia and other old coins uh, and stuff like that and I like using them in my works. I think they look awesome. Yeah. Anyway, as usual, I could go on for a very long time about this, explaining everything in detail, what I did and why I did it and so on and so forth. 
But uh, let's just leave it at that for now. I think this video is long enough as is. So I will see you in the next episode. And until then, hail the snail.